going to be making dinner and I'm going to be answering some of your questions as I do it. We are going to be making rice and some teriyaki chicken. I do a lot of cooking with rice. Um, anyone who knows me knows that if I'm eating something, it's usually Asian or Asian inspired. We have an Asian supermarket near where I live that I like to get a lot of authentic instant ramen from and different things to make like onigiri and all kinds of Asian foods. Um, but tonight I sadly just have this grocery store chicken in a bag. So that's what we're having tonight. So let's just jump right into it. We are going to start with the chicken um, and I'm gonna be doing it in the oven. So as we do the cooking, I'll also be answering all of your questions that you guys sent to me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Discord. Um, also, if you didn't know, I have you know, all the social medias, including Discord. So you should totally join my Discord server and follow me on all my other social medias while you're at it. Okay, so one of the first questions I got was from Erin. And she asked what my number one writing tip would be. And a lot of people who write or watch videos from other writers probably have heard the answer I'm going to give a lot. But honestly, it's, it's the best tip I could give. It's to keep writing. Even if you're stuck, if you are at a portion in the story where you just don't know what to do and you're struggling with coming up with a good idea or a dialogue, just keep writing. And if that story is at a standstill for you, work on something else, write something else, because through doing that, you may be able to come up with what you weren't able to come up with before. Um, so honestly, the best advice I could give is just keep, keep writing. Don't stop. Don't stop for any reason. Um, try writing outside of your comfort zone, write your daily thoughts, write creative stories, and just keep writing. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cook the rice. And as I cook the rice, I'm going to answer the question that Brandon asked. And Brandon asked, when getting into the mindset of writing stories or creating that environment, what do you do to get into that thinking mindset to create a story or come up with ideas? And that's a good question. It's different for everybody, but personally, whenever I'm trying to get in the mindset of writing and get like those creative juices flowy, um, I always try and surround myself with um, music and outside environments that are similar to what I'm writing. Um, so for example, in Fallen For You, which is my upcoming novel, it's fall almost winter. So it's like super cloudy all the time and it's pretty chilly. So I always, tried to write during the fall or during winter because I felt like my inspiration level for that book was at its highest. And um, I also really liked to listen to like anime soundtracks and um, just different sorts of music that I personally thought went with the scenes I was writing or went with the mood or tone of the chapter and scenes. Um, I also really like to use uh, aromatherapy lotions. So I have one from Bath & Body Works called Focus and it actually helps me to focus. So I really like that. And I also really like lighting candles um, because I feel like the candles, you know, keep the room scented and help me keep writing. It's weird and it doesn't make any sense, but for some reason it helps me write and it makes me feel like I'm at my highest when it comes to being creative and stuff.
another question. So Thomas asked, do you outline your books before you start? And the answer is sometimes. I don't always, um, I, I know it's better too, but when I started following for you, I just did it all off the top of my head and I just sort of let the book write the way it wanted to. And I would start in a notebook and transfer it to the computer. So if I wanted to change anything, I would just change it as I was switching from notebook to the computer. Um, but in a book that I'm going to be having come out next after Fallen For You, um, I did outline that one because it's a, it's a bit more complicated than Fallen For You. Um, there's a lot more that happens in that then following for you so that one I did outline and I would suggest outlining for anyone who writes makes things a lot easier and a, a lot easier to remember when you know you get to a certain scene and you're like where was I going with this so I suggest outlining So while we wait on the food to finish cooking, uh, we're gonna go ahead and answer the rest of the questions. So Thomas asked another question. He actually asked a few of them, so thanks Thomas, I appreciate it. Uh, he asked, do you write mostly on paper or on a computer? And I do both. I usually start out on paper and then transfer the story to a computer. And it's like that for pretty much all my writing projects. I honestly don't have any that I didn't start out on paper. So I use both, but once it's transferred from the paper to the computer, everything is done on the computer. I don't do anything else on paper after that. Okay, so the rice is done, so we're gonna stir it. And as I stir it, I'm gonna answer another question from Thomas again. He asked what my opinion is on self-publishing versus going with a traditional publisher. And it's different for everybody. I think it depends on the person um, for which one's better. I went with self-publishing because I wanted that creative freedom. I wanted freedom to make all my decisions when it came to who was editing it, who was making my cover art, um, uh, how they were going about the process. I wanted to have complete control all over all of that. So um, another big reason why I wanted to do the self-publishing was because of the creative freedom that you get with self-publishing because I know traditional publishers can sometimes tweak things um, if they think that there's something in your story that will fit better with what they're looking for they'll have you change it even if that wasn't your intention or wasn't your original idea um, and that can sometimes you know overlook and um, change what the author intended and wanted for the book and that's not something I wanted what I wanted was for my book to say what I wanted it to say. Um, so I decided that traditional publishing wasn't for me. Um, that's not to say that traditional publishing is a bad thing or something that others shouldn't do. In uh, Self-publishing comes with a lot of work, a lot of financial work, and a lot of work on you because you are doing everything yourself. You don't have a publisher there to do it for you. Um, so if managing time, managing money, and managing all that um, doesn't work for you, if that's not something you can do, then I would definitely go and try and find a traditional publisher. Plus, with traditional publishing, you have that name tied to your book. Um, so, you know, like, if you see a book and it was published by Harper Teen, um, a lot of people will be like, oh, I love books published by Harper. So, of course, I'm going to get it um, versus having a self-published author who doesn't have any name tied to their book except for their own. Um, so, that can sometimes uh, make a big difference in whether you sell a book or not. So, if you want that name tied to your book and if you want other people to um, handle... It's tilted. Tilt it back so I can keep going. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. There were camera difficulties and our chicken is done. So yeah, that was basically my view on traditional versus uh, self-publishing. 
it really depends on the person and it depends on what you're looking for in your book and in publishing. So, yeah, I don't think either one's bad and I don't think either one's better than the other either. It's just what that individual needs. Okay, so now we're going to add the sauce to the chicken. Um, and Thomas asked another. And Thomas asked another question. He asked what the longest is that it's taken me to complete a book, and what's the shortest. Um, so the longest it's taken me is. The longest it's taken me is Fallen For You, which is my debut novel. Um, I had started it my freshman year of high school, and I finished it uh, senior year, but I put it off on the back burner for a while because I just felt like it wasn't time for... Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I had started it freshman year of high school, and I finished it my senior year, but I had put it off on the back burner because I just felt like it wasn't the time to keep going with Fallen For You. I wanted to write some other stuff. Um, so I completed Fallen For You, the writing of it, um, after four years, but I didn't complete all the other stuff like the editing and whatnot until last year in like fall. So it took me roughly six years to finish Fallen For You. And the shortest that it's taken me is probably a year, which is the book that I have coming out after Fallen For You. Um, it didn't take any time. I was so invested in that story and just, I, I just had so much going on in my head. I was like, I, I have to write this down. I have to get it on paper. I have to type it out. Um, so I flew through that one. Um, I know a lot of other people can write books in like a month or something, but I don't. I, I take a while. So my longest would be six years and my shortest would be a year. All right, so now we're going to make the bowls. So I am making one for my sister, for my brother, and myself. All right, and so the next question is, again, from Thomas, and he asked, do you have any stories that you started but never finished? Um, and yes, I do. So I don't have many because I actually, I enjoy what I write. So all the ones that I've like started but haven't finished right now, I'm going to finish. Um, they just are waiting in line. question is from Joe and he asks how much do you budget for advertising and the answer is I currently don't I don't I don't pay to advertise right now um, but if I were to you would budget for it the way you budget for anything else so you just create a spreadsheet with all of your monthly uh, expenses and take how much you earn in a month and you'll add up all your expenses and subtract that from your monthly earnings and whatever you have left over you can usually put towards other stuff one of the things you can put it towards is advertising for me mine would probably be fifty dollars but currently i don't pay anything for advertising because i just do all of my marketing on social media which is free so i'm gonna finish up my food with my siblings it turned out pretty good um so that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to check out all my social medias. I'll have them linked below. And also subscribe and click that bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.